In this 10 minute video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to get started with the DJI Mavic 3 and get professional results straight away. It doesn't matter if this is your first drone, you've upgraded to a bigger drone, or you've been flying for a while. There is something in this video for everybody. All right, there's no time to lose, let's jump right in. In this video, I'm gonna take you through what's in the box with a quick overview, the initial setup, the app, including what every icon means, your first flight, the camera settings, and each one of the flight modes. Each section will be short and concise, teaching you the absolute essentials. So what's in the box? In this case, it's the fly more combo I'm taking a look at. And the first item we're looking at is the most obvious, it's the drone itself. So this is the Mavic 3, four thirds CMOS sensor, 46 minutes of flight time, omnidirectional obstacle sensing. This is the best of the best right now. And quite simply, the best flying camera you can get. Then we have the RC-N1 controller. Now this is what you're going to attach your phone to, to use to fly your drone. Now the controller's joysticks are in the bottom of the controller, but the Fly More combo also comes with two spare joysticks for your controller. We then have three controller cables. Now you will use these to attach your controller to whichever device you're using. There's a USB-C, a lightning connector, and a micro USB connector. Next up, we have three of the intelligent flight batteries. And these are what's gonna give you that 46 minutes flight time. You also get spare low noise propellers. You then get a portable charger. Now, if you bought the base kit, this will plug directly into your drone to charge the battery. But if you've got the Fly More combo, it also comes with the battery charging hub. So you'll plug this portable charger into your battery charging hub and then you can charge all three batteries at once. You also get a type C USB cable. And again, if you buy the Fly More combo, you get ND filters. You get an ND4, an ND8, an ND16, and an ND32. And lastly, this all comes wrapped up in the convertible carrying case. This can be used in a shoulder bag configuration or a backpack configuration. So you really get the best of both worlds when transporting your new DJI Mavic 3. The initial setup. Before you go out flying, you want to unfold the drone, put your phone in the controller and power both on, which can be done with a short then a long press of the power button on both. The reason you wanna do this before going flying for the first time is because there is a few steps you want to complete to ensure a straightforward first flight. First, they download and install the DJI Fly app on your device. You can do this by going to the app store and searching DJI Fly. Next and most importantly, you want to upgrade the drone's firmware to get all the latest new features and improvements. If your drone requires a firmware update, you'll get a prompt in the top left of the app to update. And this can be done by tapping the prompt and allowing the drone a few minutes to update. Put your SD card into the drone and make sure you can record video and take photos with that SD card. You don't wanna get out with your drone in the field and realize that your SD card doesn't work. That's all you need to do is take a look at the app. Now the first thing you'll see on the top left of the app is the flight mode. And if you change between normal, semi and sport mode, this is where you'll see that update reflected. Next to that you have your drone status. And this will tell you if you're okay to fly or if something needs attention, like restricted airspace, maybe your drone needs calibrated, the compass or the IMU, or wind warnings, etc. If you tap on this, you can adjust the return to home altitude, max flight distance, and your max altitude. Then we have a battery indicator, and this will tell you the percentage of your battery left. And if you click it, you'll see how long before automatic return to home kicks in, forced landing, and then how long until the battery is depleted. Next to the percentage, you will also have the time until the battery is depleted displayed. And so you'll know exactly how long you have left to fly. Then you have the RC signal strength, this will change if you fly behind objects such as trees. You also have a status indicator for the vision sensors. And then you have a GPS strength indicator telling you how many satellites you're connected to. Now you wanna make sure the GPS signal is good and it's locked before you go flying so that return to home will work should you need it to. Next up in the bottom left, we have a map. Now the map will show you where the drone is, where you are in relation to the drone, and it'll also draw a path of the flight you have taken so far. You also have flight parameters for the drone, such as current speed, height, and the distance it is away from you. Now to the right of this, you have a button that takes you into your media library, and this is where you'll be able to see all the photos and videos that you have taken so far. All right, so the first time you take your drone out flying, I recommend you come to a large open area like this where there's no risk of you hitting any obstacles and you can fly and learn the controllers in a completely safe way. Now let me show you how you take off and land. There is two ways. The first way is automatic takeoff and automatic landing. In the app, if you hit the auto takeoff button to the left and then press and hold the button in the middle, the drone will automatically take off. 
Now if you then want to land the drone, you can press the same button again and press and hold to land and the drone will automatically land. Now there is a second way to take off and land your drone and that is to do it manually. To do this, you wanna press the two sticks downwards and inwards. This will start the propellers off the drone and then just press up on the left stack and the drone will hover into the air. Now to land the drone, quite simply pull down and hold the left stick. After a few seconds, the drone will land automatically. Now really, the point of your first flight should be getting to learn the controls so that it becomes muscle memory and that you're able to fly without really thinking about it. So here's a few things I recommend. First, put the drone up into the air. Let it hover a few seconds, just to make sure everything's okay before you go off flying into the air. Then put it up into the air. I recommend keeping it in semi mode as this is the slowest mode and is perfect for beginners. And then I recommend you practice a few maneuvers. Now that you've been out for your first flight, and you know how to handle the drone, let's take a look at the camera settings. So it's currently in auto, shown by this icon here. When in auto, the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed are controlled automatically. And if you want to change how much over or under you want the drone to automatically expose for, you can do so by clicking EV. Increasing this number will make your image brighter, and decreasing it will make the image darker. Clicking the auto button will put the camera in manual or pro mode, and from here you can adjust the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed manually. You can also set these individually back to auto by clicking the auto icon next to them if you only want to manually control certain camera parameters. Clicking the settings icon will take you to a menu where you can adjust the white balance or you can set it to auto. Again, you can change the resolution and frame rate from here. You can also change the color mode to D-Log, which is a flat profile that allows you to get more dynamic range using color grading in post. When using D-Log, you can turn on color display assist, which will apply a grade to your preview to give you a better idea what you're recording, but it will still store that flat profile video to your SD card. You can also change coding format, file format, and video bit rate. If you change from video to photo mode by pressing this button on your controller, the options remain largely the same. The only difference is by clicking the camera settings again, you can choose to store your images in JPEG, RAW, or RAW and JPEG. But the auto exposure, manual exposure, ISO shutter, and aperture settings remain the same. Flight modes. Looking at flight modes, and the first is photo mode. When in this mode, hitting the record button on the controller, or this button in the app will take a single photo. You also have auto exposure bracketing, which will take three photos at different exposures, which can merge together for more dynamic range and post, burst photos, and time shots. Looking at video mode, we have our normal video mode, but we also have a slow motion video mode on the Mavic 3. This gives incredible 120 FPS slow motion shots that look amazing. Then we have Master Shots, an automatic mode on the Mavic 3 that sets the drone off to record a series of moves around your subject to create amazing sequences. To do this, put it in Master Shots mode and draw a box around your subject. You will then get an estimated flight time, and you can also adjust certain parameters such as width, length, and height off the Master Shots moves. When you hit go, the drone will go off and do a set range of moves, and it will display each move as it does them. Once complete, the drone will come back and the sequence will be stored to your SD card for you to use. Next up, we have Quick Shots, again an automatic mode where the Mavic 3 will perform certain moves for you. Let's look at one of these in practice. I'm going to do the Asteroid, so I select the Asteroid Quick Shot, and you can see a preview of what this Quick Shot is going to look like to the left of it. Then draw a box around your subject, in this case it's me, and click Go. The drone will now perform the quick shot. You can see its progress around the record button, and once done, it will come back to you and the quick shot will be stored in your SD card to use. Next, we have hyperlapse mode, and you can use this to get stunning hyperlapses using the Mavic 3. There's also a panel mode to get them extra wide photos, and we also have active tracking, and this can be used when in normal video mode. To do this, draw a box around the subject you want to track. An active track will allow the drone to move around and track you. Lastly, the DJI Mavic 3 has a second zoom camera, which you can access by clicking explore mode. You can change the zoom level by clicking the button below the binoculars. And once you get to seven times zoom, you start using the Mavic 3 tele lens. This can be used to explore with the drone or get really unique shots. So there you have it. Everything you need to get started and get cinematic footage from the DJI Mavic 3 in 10 minutes. Hopefully you've learned something new no matter what level of flyer you are.
Now if you've liked this video, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up, by clicking the like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want tips, tricks and tutorials about how to get better photos and more cinematic footage, then I recommend checking out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. And if you want to stick around and watch some more of them videos now, then here's a few I personally recommend checking out. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your Mavic 3. I'll see you just over there.